dear thrill-seekers and the curious, to the realm where the ordinary meets the eerie. Join us around the campfire for this next tale if you dare. In the heart of the 1980s, in the picturesque town of Myrtle Point, Jeremy Bright epitomized the quintessential all-American boy. With a passion for sports and an innate charm that endeared him to everyone, he was a kid who seemed to know no strangers. His mother, whose memories were etched in a segment of the iconic show Unsolved Mysteries, fondly recalled, he knew everybody, and everybody knew him. He was a real outgoing kid. As the mid-August sun began to wane in 1986, Jeremy embarked on what should have been a typical visit to family before embarking on his high school freshman year. Little did he know that this trip, coupled with an innocent outing to the local county fair in Myrtle Point, would set in motion a chilling mystery that still haunts the town over three decades later. With excitement brimming, Jeremy, alongside his sister S.T.E., pronounced S.T., and a friend, made their way to the 75th annual Coos County Fair and Rodeo. This yearly tradition held a special place in their hearts, especially as they had recently relocated to Grants Pass, Oregon, following their mother Diane Beatty's separation from their stepfather. However, Myrtle Point remained home to their extended family, and this week was to be spent reconnecting with grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins. The day started like any other, with a sense of anticipation hanging in the air. Yet, as the evening descended upon the fairgrounds on August 14th, the atmosphere shifted drastically. Jeremy, who had been at the heart of the festivities, suddenly became elusive, vanishing from the scene without a trace. The last credible sighting of Jeremy Bright took place later that evening when he stopped by his grandmother's tavern, presumably to retrieve some money. From that moment onward, he would remain an enigma, disappearing into the night with no explanation. What followed was a perplexing sequence of events that seemed to defy reason. The initial police investigation was marked by delays, and despite the frantic efforts of family and friends, it yielded no tangible results. The hopes of finding Jeremy alive dwindled as time ticked away. Jeremy Bright, the vibrant boy who once lit up Myrtle Point, had seemingly evaporated into thin air, leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions. The community watched in despair as the investigation faltered, prompting the haunting realization that Jeremy was likely no longer among the living. On the fateful day of the fair, August 14, 1986, Jeremy and ST embarked on a journey that should have been filled with laughter and shared moments. It was Kids' Day at the Coos County Fair, a time when young hearts reveled in the magic of the festivities. For Jeremy and S.T.E., this day was an annual highlight, a cherished tradition that drew them back to Myrtle Point year after year. Their move to Grants Pass the previous year had marked a significant change in their lives. It was a relocation necessitated by their mother Diane Beatty's separation from their stepfather. Yet, the roots of their family tree still firmly clung to Myrtle Point, where grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins resided. And so, this week offered a chance to rekindle family bonds and savor the moments that distance had made all the more precious. As the sun painted the sky with shades of orange and pink, the events leading up to Jeremy's disappearance seemed, by all accounts, ordinary. Laughter echoed through the fairgrounds, and the siblings reveled in the joy of the moment. But as evening descended, casting long shadows over the fair, something sinister unfurled beneath the neon lights and the joyful laughter. Jeremy and S.T.E., inseparable for much of the day, parted ways at the fairgrounds, each with the intent to reunite at the Ferris wheel when the clock struck 5 p.m. However, as the appointed hour came and went, a chilling realization settled upon S.T.S. heart, her brother was nowhere to be found. In growing distress, she reported Jeremy's absence to a police officer, her voice trembling with fear and uncertainty. Hopeful for reassurance, she received none. The officer's words offered little solace, a mere reassurance that Jeremy would eventually reappear. But as the minutes turned into hours, the reassurance rang hollow. As darkness shrouded the fairgrounds, the truth became painfully apparent, Jeremy Bright had inexplicably vanished, and no amount of hope or searching could bring him back. 
A palpable sense of dread settled over Myrtle Point, a close-knit community that had just been thrust into the abyss of uncertainty. Conflicting reports further muddied the waters of Jeremy's disappearance. Some claimed to have glimpsed him near the Ferris wheel earlier in the day, while others spoke of him entering a pickup truck. The timeline of events grew increasingly hazy, and it remained unclear whether Jeremy was genuinely missing when S.T.E. first approached the police officer. He was meant to be in the company of his friend Johnny, but even their interactions that day remained shrouded in uncertainty. In the absence of a formal Amber Alert system, the perplexing nature of Jeremy's disappearance deepened the mystery. Days passed, and still, Jeremy's whereabouts remained a chilling enigma. His family's frantic search efforts yielded no answers, and the situation grew dire with each passing moment. The local newspaper in Myrtle Point did little to hasten the search, running a small article about Jeremy's disappearance on August 19, 1986, five days after he was first reported missing. The headline, A Stark Youth is Missing, offered only a cursory glimpse into the unfolding tragedy. Speculation arose that the delay in media coverage, coupled with its inconspicuous placement in the paper, hindered the urgent search for Jeremy. Conflicting accounts painted an ever murkier picture of the events surrounding Jeremy's disappearance. Some reports suggested that ST had seen her brother near the Ferris wheel earlier in the day or entering a pickup truck. Yet, two accounts from family members pointed to a different narrative, one that hinted at Jeremy still being alive that fateful evening. Jeremy's mother, Diane Beatty, recounted a chilling phone call she received from her son around 4.45 p.m., a mere 15 minutes before he was scheduled to reunite with STE at the Ferris wheel. The call bore no hint of trouble, leaving Beatty bewildered and anxious about her son's fate. The perplexing saga took another twist as family members reported that Jeremy had visited the local tavern they operated, seeking money around 9.45 p.m. on that ill-fated night. This encounter was regarded as the last credible sighting of Jeremy Bright, a haunting glimpse of the young boy who would vanish without a trace. Amid the growing confusion and despair, law enforcement briefly entertained the theory that Jeremy had run away with the traveling carnival accompanying the fair. They pointed to his mother's separation from her husband as a possible motive for a teenager seeking an escape. However, Sergeant Steve Dalton of the Coos County Sheriff's Office refused to accept this narrative. He delved deep into his investigation, conducting exhaustive interviews with friends and family, and ultimately concluded that Jeremy was not the kind of boy who would embark on such a solitary journey. Years later, a tip led the Coos County Sheriff's Department to a man named Jeremy Bright working for a traveling circus in Florida. The hope for a breakthrough faded as authorities discovered that this was an entirely different Jeremy Bright, not the boy who had vanished from Myrtle Point. The inexplicable deepened when Diane Beatty arrived in Myrtle Point, determined to join the search for her son. As she arrived at her ex-husband's house, she made a discovery that only intensified the puzzle. Jeremy's wallet, keys, and a cherished new watch were found, abandoned. This watch held sentimental value for Jeremy, and Beatty knew her son well enough to understand that he would never willingly part with these belongings. Their presence at the stepfather's house defied explanation, leaving those who knew Jeremy bewildered. Despite tireless efforts and numerous leads, nothing else connected to Jeremy's disappearance ever surfaced, not even the blue nylon shorts and red tank top he had worn on that fateful day. The void of information only deepened the mystery, shrouding the investigation in an eerie silence. In the initial days following Jeremy's disappearance, ST informed authorities that she had seen her brother in a pickup truck with a man, igniting suspicions about the boy's former babysitter, Terry Lee Steinhoff. Rumors circulated that Jeremy might have attended a party with Steinhoff on the evening of August 14th, yet no concrete evidence materialized. Adding to the intrigue, one witness reported seeing Steinhoff's brother, David, covered in blood on the very night Jeremy vanished. While both Steinhoff and his brother were questioned by law enforcement, they never officially became suspects. Nevertheless, Terry Lee Steinhoff remained a person of interest in the case until his passing. Authorities even conducted searches of Steinhoff's property, yet found no evidence connecting him to Jeremy or his mysterious disappearance. 
in a chilling twist, the same week that Unsolved Mysteries aired a segment about Jeremy Bright, Terry Lee Steinhoff pled guilty to the brutal murder of 32-year-old Patricia Morris. The gruesome crime involved multiple stab wounds to Morris's throat, and her lifeless body was abandoned near a bar in Coos County. Despite this heinous act, Steinhoff never confessed to any involvement in Jeremy's disappearance. Authorities, in their pursuit of answers, tried repeatedly to engage him, but he remained frustratingly silent. As with any case shrouded in mystery, an array of theories and speculations swirled around Jeremy's disappearance. Some witnesses claimed he had been accidentally shot at a nearby lake, while others asserted that he had been drugged at a party. Jeremy's mother, ever haunted by the possibilities, confessed, every time I'd hear a new one, I'd have nightmares for a week or so. She held on to the hope that, if nothing else, her son had not suffered. The perplexing enigma also took a toll on Jeremy's friend Johnny, who had been with him on the night he vanished. Johnny was reportedly deeply upset and plagued by nightmares in the aftermath of that fateful evening. Sadly, Johnny passed away in 2011, taking with him any potential knowledge of the events of August 14, 1986. Despite the passage of decades, the Coos County Sheriff's Department continues to receive tips and leads regarding Jeremy's disappearance. Each year, around the time of the Coos County Fair, new information surfaces, offering fleeting glimpses of hope. Sheriff Craig Zanny, committed to bringing closure to Jeremy's family, keeps a photo of the young boy in his office, a poignant reminder that the case remains unresolved. In 2011, on the somber occasion of the 25th anniversary of Jeremy Bright's vanishing from the Coos County Fair, his family gathered to hold a memorial service. Although they assumed that he passed away on or around the day he vanished, his mother, Diane Beatty, clings to a glimmer of hope. Of course I've got hope. We hear all the time of miraculous things happening, she remarked in an interview after the memorial. Jeremy's family firmly believes that his remains are still hidden somewhere in the expanse of Coos County, waiting patiently to be discovered. The saga continues, with tips and new leads trickling in as recently as 2018. One tip suggested that Jeremy's body had been concealed in a well in Coos County, prompting authorities to mount an expedition. Yet, despite their painstaking efforts, no trace of Jeremy emerged from the depths of the well. Sheriff Craig Zanny, undeterred by the passage of time, remains resolute in his commitment to the Bright family. I always think of the family, imagine them walking through a crowd looking at faces wondering if they just missed him, he reflected in an interview. His unwavering dedication is symbolized by the photo of Jeremy Bright that still adorns his office, a poignant testament to the enduring quest for answers. With each passing year, as the Coos County Fair returns, New tips continue to flow in, rekindling the hope that one day, the haunting mystery of Jeremy Bright's disappearance will finally be laid to rest. Until then, his story remains etched in the annals of unsolved mysteries, a chilling enigma that lingers, casting a shadow over the close-knit community of Myrtle Point and leaving a community yearning for answers that have eluded them for over three decades. As we draw the curtains on yet another chilling journey into the depths of the unknown, I want to extend my gratitude to all you brave souls who joined us on this expedition. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. You'll be the first to know when we unearth our next chilling chronicle. Until then, stay curious, stay cautious, and never stop exploring the realms of the macabre and the miraculous. Signing off from creepy tales and curiosities. Remember, the night may be dark, but there's always a story waiting to be uncovered. Good night, and pleasant nightmares.